Hey guys, welcome back to Wine Beast, the wine show hosted by a couple of ordinary guys. My name is Adam and this is Jeremiah. Jeremiah, tell the good people what we're beasting on tonight. All right guys, so today, a nice summer afternoon, uh, midweek, we got ourselves a decoy Cab Sauve, um, which is from the Sonoma uh, County in California. It's a 2015, uh, really good year if you check it on Vivino, which we'll get into in a little bit. But in addition to that, we also have a special treat uh, which we've done in a few episodes, which is a pairing with food. So today we have a pizza, a really nice pizza here. Mm. This is from a local uh, pizzeria here in Toronto on the east side called uh, Salt and Tobacco. And we got their Cluck Pizza, uh, which is chicken, fior de latte, gorgonzola, onions, chilies, uh, arugula. And we also ordered some uh, hot honey. So we got some hot honey that you can just pour on here on top of the pizza. <laughs> it's going to be sticky. That's going to be a sticky, hot, uh, hot mess. All right. So yeah, nothing really goes better with uh, pizza than red wine. Yeah. Um, this may be not the pizza that I would have paired with this red wine, because again, this is like a white pizza with chicken, um, no tomato sauce. I feel like red wine, you want to get that tomato sauce, you want to get some of that s spicy meat, uh, smoky meat, complimentary flavors. But nonetheless, I feel like this will still pair really nicely, yeah. uh, just with like Again, the wood-fired crust, and um, yeah, I, th I think it'll still be a really nice pairing. So, so um, why, don't, why don't we do uh, a sip of this wine first? Yeah, actually, let's talk and about we'll, this, and then we'll get into the pizza a bit. So, cheers, 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 everyone. Um, first off, the vanilla, bat, vanilla on the nose. A lot of vanilla. Mm. This is a um, a really oaked wine. Uh, definitely has spent some time in a barrel. You got that cocoa kind of smell I mean a dark, the darker fruits I would say right like the Current. blackberries currants yeah a little blueberry-ish uh, jam kind of smell really nice yeah really nice. I gotta say the decoy is one of my favorite wines and um, actually trekked across the city to track down two bottles on a crazy snowy night uh, so that's how much I like this wine um, had it last summer for the first time and just was super impressed with it at the price point. Um, it's a fantastic wine for, you know, a little bit more than a weeknight. It's definitely, uh, you know, maybe a nice dinner, a nice date. Um, you want to crack this open. Um, 2015 Vintage uh, is actually like pretty well known. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. It was a good year. Uh, this stuff could not stay on the shelves. And if I think if you give this some time too as well, like another five years, six years, um, it's going to be even better. So yeah. if you can get enough, get your hands on enough of it that you can hold it, this will actually turn out to be yeah. uh, really nice after some cellaring. So we got the wine, we got the pizza it's here, time, which we yeah. talked about. So we got the wood in. fire pizza. Uh, let's give it a it's shot. Like soft, uh, really soft in the middle. So I feel like you have to fold it over like a sandwich to actually get so it doesn't fall over your face. That honey is really nice addition. Oh, Sweetens man. it up with that a little bit of the heat. They put some chili oil, Ooh. I think, mixed with the honey. That is hot. Crunchy crust. Some caramelized onions on yeah. there. You got that nice like crunchy crust on the back from the wood fire. Almost burnt. It goes well actually with the red wine. Thing, though. The crust is that well done at the edges, but this is still suffering from that problem that I find with a lot of Neapolitan style or wood-fired pizzas, which is that the center is soggy. Mm -hmm. And that fucking kills me. I just, I hate that shit. Well, when, when it's done right, I feel like it's all the way through, right even into the center. And the center is just a little bit soggy. I don't know if that's from sitting like in the it. box maybe. Do you think that could be it? But I've had no. it at Libretto where the no. center is soggy. I think it's how it sits in the wood oven. Mm. The center is never really exposed to the fire like the edges are, right? Mm. With the crust. So you're getting that like intense heat. Five, six hundred degrees. On the Around edges. the edges, yeah. The middle and a lot of the ingredients tend to like run toward the middle, which I probably softens it up as well. But so let me just try something here. Let me take a bite of the pizza and then take a sip of the wine. Let's see I feel like it's out. still a really good pairing. Like I said, despite what I was saying, and the reason why... The Gorgonzola. 
I was gonna say arugula, pe the pepperiness of the arugula um, and the red wine. I like the, I actually really like the combo of the gorgonzola with the wine. It's like very, uh, yeah. it, it's like exchangeable flavor almost. Really good. I gotta say, this is living right here. Outside, beautiful night, great wine. Summer night, Pizza. mid July, you know. Here in Toronto, we don't have a lot of summer, so we gotta make the most of the nights that we do have. Um, but on that note, with summer, and this summer especially has been World Cup. Yeah, it's been a special summer, yeah. We've talked about World Cup before. Germany got knocked out, so that's my team, but I've been following. A good friend of ours is British. Uh, obviously, if you've been following, you know that Britain got knocked out by Croatia, which I think a lot of people were surprised by. They were expecting the uh, it coming home, the cup was going to come home. I'm doing a lot of quotations. I don't know. Uh, I feel like <laughs> air I, quotes. This is my, like, my fifth air quote. No. Um, but the cup was going to come That's it. No more air quotes. No more air quotes. And no more fucking Trump talk either. No, I ain't talking about scrump. Um, a lot of people were surprised, disappointed about uh, the results yesterday. Obviously not Croatian fans, but... They were definitely not an underdog, but not a... Um, a serious contender, you oh, know. As far as European, horse. yeah. As far, as far as European teams go, but I don't know. Our friend tells us that they have a lot of great players. Yeah, I don't really know anything about this, but I mean, good for them. Great for the country of Croatia. So now we've got ourselves Croatia and France uh, setting up for the World Cup. So that will be an interesting match. I think out of the two. I probably am still rooting for France. Um, yeah. I mean, France got it in '98, was yeah. it? Yeah, around there. Yeah, I remember, remember that. I feel like, uh, you know, obviously, completely different squad now. But yeah. um, I don't know. I kind of like to see Croatia win it. Just, yeah. just again for like, it's a, their first World Cup final appearance. You know, for them to win it for the first time ever too. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. You know, just again, I like. A, I like a country that hasn't really had a good crack at it before. You know, it's kind of a Cinderella story, right? Croatia. I mean, nobody's expecting Croatia. Speaking of Cinderella stories, Drake just released a new album. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure most of you've been already stories. Yeah, already hearing this on the radio. Um, Twenty odd songs. Scorpion. Um, everybody started this new dance, the Shiggy, which is to that song in my feelings. Um, Starts out like Kiki, do you love me? And then they do the motions, and that's turned into a whole thing. Everything goes viral now, so this has become a viral dance yeah. that people are doing. I like the album. I think there's probably now there's a lot of filler songs. There's songs you're gonna listen to and never listen to again on those 20 odd tracks. But there's probably I mean everybody's heard God's Plan. Everybody's heard Upset. Um, nice for what? Nice for what? That's a standout for me. So there's probably about, I mean right now he's broken records that the Beatles had, which is like seven songs or something like that in the top, uh, well, top ten. Well, a lot of people are saying this is a kind of a manipulation really, because when you release an album with that many tracks on it, the chances are pretty good, it's like on Spotify, that somebody's going to be streaming one of those tracks at any at any given time. And so it's basically put the whole album into, like if yeah. you look at their viral 50 or their Canada's top 50 or their worldwide top 50, it's just like 50 fucking Drake songs. Yeah. Um, well, and he had the most streams, I think, of any album. Like, yeah. It's, it's, so, can't knock it. The guy's got some, got some momentum. I mean, obviously, it's super popular. You hear a million of his songs, and if you go to a bar or restaurant or driving in your car, so can't knock that guy from Toronto making it as a rapper. Like, we good love for him. that, yeah. The city fucking and on the rap note, Drake. congratulations to Cardi B and Offset. They had a baby <laughs> recently. Culture. Uh, I think the baby's name is Culture. Yeah. Which Culture. is also the name of their Amigos album. Culture with a K. Actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's also the name of the Amigos album. Mm -hmm. What the? Like it's just yeah. like promotion. Culture like, and Culture Two. Cross, and I think they're working on something. Cross else. Cross promotion. Yeah. But I mean, industry entertainment. That's what happens. So do it for the culture. But apparently they got married like a year ago in some secret ceremony and then like after he proposed and then they've been married this whole time, but I don't know. Okay. But good for them. New baby. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, I always find Cardi B entertaining. Like, aside from the music, she's always an entertaining character, like, on Instagram and all that Personality, stuff. Personality, like, yeah. I mean, that's why people love her. Yeah, yeah. Really memorable quotes and silly stuff like that. Um, Alright, so, back to the wine. Um, what are your final thoughts on this wine? What are your, what are your recos? Things you like, things you didn't like? For me, this wine is, it's a standout. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say that for me, it's, it's five out of five. Like I just, I don't know if I have like, I have positive association with this wine. Um, completing a big project at work and then all of us going out to um, have a nice dinner on a patio and having this wine. And it was the first time that I tried it. And I don't know if it's just like nostalgia factor, but also, you know, I really do feel like it's an exceptional wine for the price. And um, it's by Duckhorn, uh, that they're a vineyard that actually makes wines at a much higher price point. You've got that bottle at home that's probably a hundred dollar bottle of the Duckhorn uh, Cabernet. This is sort of their entry level yeah. brand. It's, yeah. it's their, you know, kind of um, lower, I don't want to say lower quality or anything, it's just like a lower price point, um, you know, for whatever reasons that may be. And uh, it's just a fantastic bottle of wine, and I, I really like it. I don't really have to say much more than that. I mean, it's, f it's five stars for me, and I think it's great for a, a nice dinner with your significant other yep. or uh, for me or friend. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's good, for, <laughs> it's good for this. It's good for pizza. I mean, yeah. All right, for me, um, I give it a four out of five. Personally, I like smoky wines. Like you can taste that smoke from the, the cask and stuff like that. Yeah. It doesn't really have that smoke. It's more of a smooth, like easy drinking red. It's in the same class as like the uh, Jaylor, yeah, um, Seven Oaks Cabernet, and the Jaylor is much bigger oak, much smokier, you know, much more on that. Um, and this is just a little bit smoother. I, I feel like this is more of a crowd pleaser for that reason. Yeah, a Jaylor could be to some people that could be a little bit much. I think could be all personal taste, obviously. This is rated a 4.0 on Vivino by over 2,000 uh, ratings. Retails for about $37.95 at the LCBO, uh, $37.95 Canadian for those that are in Canada. And uh, LCBO obviously is our liquor uh, uh, store here in, in Ontario. Um, so it's, it's a really nice wine, you're right. Entry level, um, great flavor, great value for what you're getting. But paired really nice with this pizza, I think, with some, you know, exotic, like some, you know, more uh, flavorful cheeses and spice and things like that. And I think it would go really nice with like, I'm sorry, like a pasta, uh, something with red sauce, some baguettes, some cheese, like some like smoky kind of meats, uh, like a charcuterie board, really go well with that. Or even if you're just drinking on its own, you know, sitting in a park, going to the beach, uh, bring a bottle of wine and just uh, have a nice night with someone. Yeah, well, there you have it guys. Decoy, the Mighty Duck. Uh, go, go get it. I mean, it's fucking awesome. Um, that's the best thing I can say about it. Yeah. So we were gonna get a duck pizza, but the place didn't deliver. Yeah, just, duck, duck confit. I thought that would be a good decoy. Pairing. Duck horn, tie it all together. Anyways, guys, like, comment, share, subscribe. We want to hear what you like. What do you like drinking? We'd love to feature it here on Wine Beast. Follow us on Instagram at Wine Beast Show. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Tell your friends. We'll see you guys in the next episode and enjoy your week. You should have just laughed there, man. That would have been a good moment to cut in. Good little blooper. You can always sing Vanessa Carlton. And I want you. And I need you. And I wonder if I could walk. What's that? That was across the sun. I don't something. fucking know. I always get Vanessa Carlton and uh, Michelle Branch mixed up. What did Michelle Branch say? Um, you're everything, everything to me. me. And Ever. when I close my eyes, it's you. Uh, I see. see. She probably, I think she had more hits than the other one, Vanessa mm -hmm. Carlton. I think she did. Vanessa Carlton was really that one fucking.
100 miles or whatever. It's just but like they almost look like the same person. And if you Google Michelle Branch, like if you start typing it, it's like one of the results that comes up is like, and Vanessa Carlton, same person. <laughs> All I remember is in the back of that truck with a massive piano. Yeah. Making my way down. I was like, man, what if a car hit her? You'd be like buried under that, under that piano. The last note. Cause I need you. And I miss you. And now